Info. Hi there. Today we're going to talk about Lesson 68. And Lesson 68 is all about algebraic addition. And algebraic addition is a lot about negatives and positives. So we're going to wade through this a little bit. There's a couple things that you kind of need to understand. Um, when I talk about opposites, I mean a positive number and a negative number whose absolute values are equal. For instance, if I put a negative 3 and a 3 on a number line, okay, and I talk about their absolute value, I'm talking about the distance from 0. Okay, so this is negative 3 and this is 3. So if I count the distance without looking negative or positive, 1, 2, there's three units from zero there. One, two, three, three units of zero there. So the distance between negative three and zero and zero and three are, is exactly the same. In other words, their absolute value is exactly the same. Okay? So here's another example for you. And it's, it's actually, it's the same example, but it's kind of nice because I drew it out a little bit nicer. Okay, so this is actually the same. The absolute value of negative 3 is equal to 3. And if you look at the blue, 1, 2, 3. Absolute value of 3 is also equal to 3 because 1, 2, 3 units. I like that. It's a good thing to put into your notes. Hence, negative 3 and 3 are opposites. Now, we are sometimes asked to read negatives and positives as words or to write them as words. So negative 3 can be read as the opposite of 3 and negative 3 which is in essence looks like that. Now what if we have the negative of the negative of 3 or the opposite of the opposite of 3? So if we're thinking, just looking at this, we have negative 3, or the opposite of 3. We're on the left side of 0. If we flip it and go the opposite of the opposite of 3, boom, we go over to the right side of 0. And it becomes 3. Another thing you need to know is that two negatives do make a positive. So if you have two negatives in a row, it's going to be positive. Okay. Now, this can also be read as the negative of the negative of 3, which is really 3. So I'm going to do this little thing like I did earlier. Here I go. 1, 2, 3. Here's negative of 3, the opposite of 3. And then I'm going to power over here and do the opposite of negative 3, which is 3. So the opposite of the opposite of 3 is actually 3. Okay? That's not too bad. Okay, let's take a look at some algebraic addition basics. Because we just expand using negatives and positives to do it. So how about 6 plus a negative 3? We would literally say, literally we can say this is 6 plus the opposite of 3. Or move 6 to the right of 0. <laughs> and then move 3 back to the left from the 6. Looks like 6 minus 3. Uh-oh. Really? Okay, let's think about that for just a second. If we take and we go 6 to the right, and then we move 3 to the opposite direction, it's the same thing as saying 6 minus 3. We end up with 3 for an answer. So, we can look at that particular problem as 6 plus a negative 3, 6 plus the opposite of 3, or simply 6 minus 3. And they're all the same. You write this this way, this way, this way. You're writing it exactly the same problem. And the answer will always still be 3. And notice it's a positive 3 because this 6 is positive. A 6 always is positive. Okay? It's a 3 that is opposite. Okay, here's a few more examples. We have 7 
minus 2, 7 plus the opposite of 2, 7 plus the opposite of 2. They all equal 5. If you go to the right 7 on number line and go back 2, you get 5. Here's another one. 16 plus the opposite of 2, 16 plus the opposite of 2, 16 subtract 2. All end up to be 14, and you're going to be going to the right 16, back 2. And you end up at 14. That would be pretty kind of cool. Not tough at all to understand, kind of when you start looking at it. Okay. We are sometimes put in positions where we have to solve problems using algebraic addition. So, when we have these types of problems, it's just you have to be sure you get them set up. Okay, so here's an interesting one. We have 4 minus the opposite of 2. Hmm. 4 minus 4 minus the opposite of 2. Now, we talked about that earlier, that two negatives make positive. We also talked about if you went to 4 and then you subtracted the opposite of 2, it's going to pop you back again. Uh-oh. Guess what? This turns out to be 4 minus the opposite of the opposite of 2. Well, two negatives make positive. Two negatives in a row make a positive. So guess what? That ends up to be 4 plus 2. So what I'm going to say to you, and you need to write this in your notes, is 4 plus 2 equals 6 is the same thing as 4 minus the opposite of 2. They both equal 6. So practicing 4 minus the opposite of 7. The opposite of the opposite of 7 is, you got two negatives, and two negatives make a positive, so you're going to end up with 4 plus 7, which is 11. The opposite of a negative is always going to be a positive. Okay, so you got 4 plus 7, it's going to be a positive 7. Here's another example, okay. We have negative 6 minus a minus 3 is the same thing as negative 6 plus 3. Two negatives make a positive. Doesn't change this first negative though. Okay, so we still end up with a negative 6 right here. Those don't change. Those first ones, they don't change. So you end up with negative 6 plus 3. Well, go to the left 6, come back 3, you end up with a negative 3. Okay? Negative 2 minus a minus 4, same as negative 2. Again, this number does not change. This one does, because this becomes a positive 4, because two negatives in a row make a positive. Negative 5 minus minus 2 plus 5 is the same thing as negative 5. You got two negatives in a row. That makes that a positive 2 plus 5. So we end up with negative 5 plus 5. I just use the commutative property to move it around. Negative 5 plus 5 plus 2, which ends up to be adding two opposites. Negative 5 plus 5, you get 0 out of that. Plus 2. 0 plus 2 is 2. couple more examples for you, okay? And these are kind of strings of them. I want to do that so that you get, get to see how those work. You've got a negative 7 minus the opposite of 9 minus the opposite of 2. So you've got two opposites in a row here. Remember that 7 does not change. It's just going to come straight down. Opposite and opposite of 9 is 9. Opposite of opposite of 2, 2 in a row is going to make a positive 2. So now you have a negative 7 plus a positive 9 plus a positive 2. 9 plus 2 is 11. So I carry that down. See this negative 7 never changed. It never lost its negativeness. 11 is larger and it's positive. So we take negative 7 plus 11 is the same thing as taking 11 minus 7, which ends up to be 4. And it will be positive because the larger number is positive might have to take that and chew on it for a minute or two just to kind of see how that feels to you, okay? Here's a couple more. Now this happens to be with a decimal. It works with decimals just the same as it works with whole numbers. You've got um, one point, negative 
minus a minus 1.2. Well, this one does not change. It just keeps coming down. But this does because you got two negatives in a row, so then this 1.2 becomes a positive. So you have a negative 1.4 plus 1.2. Remember that we have a negative and a positive. We subtract and we take the sign of the larger number. So we subtract, we get 0.2, but the larger number is negative. So the sign of the answer is going to be negative. Works with fractions too, okay? So if we have negative 4 fifths minus a minus or minus the opposite of 1 half, we end up with 4, negative 4 fifths. That does not change, it comes straight down. But then this, because there's two negatives in a row, this becomes a positive 1 half. So now we have to change it into fractions that have the same denominator, which if we choose 10 for our denominator, 5 times 2 is 10, 4 times 2 is 8. So your 8 goes there, minus um, 1 times 5, 2 times 5, 5 over 10. Now, we have to remember that the 4 fifths was negative. Therefore, this 8 tenths is also negative. But at the moment, we're just subtracting to get the difference between the two. So when we do that subtraction, this ends up to be 3 tenths. However, the answer is going to be negative because this 4 fifths was negative, And therefore, this answer will be negative 3 tenths. Well, this one was a lot to chew today, and I hope you understood it, and I hope it helped you to understand it, and if you have questions, please bring them to class. Thanks a lot.